Well, now, you take two weeks' holiday from the band when you get an invitation to visit America in the wake of that hit. Next comes a nationwide tour, and the country goes skiffle crazy. Roger Daltrey told us what an influence you were on him. You also inspired this young man on the left. Oh. Well, as a Geordie schoolboy, he joined the long queue for your autograph at the oh, stage no. door of the Empire <laughs> Theatre, Newcastle. <laughs> Yeah. But Lonnie, I never did get that autograph that night. But he's back for it 35 years later, Bruce Welsh. So, Bruce, you didn't get the noble signature. I never did, Michael. No, I. I... <laughs> <laughs> I'd been almost every night to see Lonnie at the Empire. And it was Saturday night, and I... You were only a lad. I was only 14, and I didn't realise at the time that the best thing about Newcastle on Tyne in those days was either the A1 South or the train, and he had to catch the... Midnight Sleeper. The Midnight Sleeper. And I'd stood for his autograph all week, and uh, he'd signed lots and lots of autographs, and it almost came to me, and it, he obviously had to rush off, and he said something like, um, go forth and multiply. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or something that sounded like that. It's a lie. He exaggerates everything. But I'd just like to say, on behalf of, of Hank and myself and thousands like us who came after you, thank you very much. God bless you. Thanks. Thank you, Bruce Wells. <laughs> well, see ya. Well, 1958, and you hit the television screens with your own show, Putting on the Donegan. A youthful comedian helps out with the vocals. None, I won't hear it. <laughs> Who's got all the talent? <laughs> Dunnigan. And O'Connor. Of course. Of course. Uh, Who's got all the personality? Uh -huh. Dunnigan. And O'Connor. Yes, yes. Who's got all the money? Tommy, Tommy Steele. Steel. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about that. Don't talk. Today, I want you to be different because I'll tell you what it is. There's normally, so you go out and play for the grannies and, and, and the mums and dads. Give Stay me the moonlight. Give me the girl. I'll give you the bullet if you don't watch out, listen. <laughs> Well, 33 years on, he's still bulletproof, though tonight he has to be abroad by popular request, but he has got something to say. Des O'Connor. Hello, Lon. You knew I'd turn up, didn't you? Yes. Now, what am I supposed to tell him about you and me and our friendship over the, what, 25 years that we've known each other? There's so many times, so many laughs, and real friendship. Um, I recall Timaru in New Zealand when I was walking past the front of the theatre where Lonnie Donegan was going to be there in concert, and I saw seven people outside the front, and I said, uh, what are you waiting for? They said, oh, we travelled 400 miles to see Lonnie Donegan. I couldn't tell him that the concert was the next night. And I came over to your hotel, and I said, Lonnie, let's get over there. You brought your guitar, and you and I went and took these people to tea in this little restaurant, and we did, what, two and a quarter hours. You sang every song you knew, and I did a lot of gags. We must be the only artists that ever took the entire house to tea. Anyway, you know I'd love to be there. You have a good night. And I suggest that the This Is Your Life team put a banjo in your hand because you got that special magic when you got that banjo. Have a good night, Lonnie. <laughs> Thank you, Des. Good story. Now, Lonnie, your influence rapidly spread to Merseyside, which gave birth to its own Scouse Skiffle. The ink is black, the page is white. Together we learn to read and write, read and write. Back together just for tonight, the spinners. What? Now, Tony Davis, let me get this right. You held regular Lonnie Donegan skiffle nights at the Cabin Club, right? Well, they were folk and skiffle. Lonnie thought it was about time that people listened to the music rather than deciding what colour his socks were and so on. They said his fans had to listen to the music. That was the important thing. And so. These folk and skiffle clubs were started all over the country at his instigation. And Mick was made president of the first. I was pres. Yeah. And because of that, all this <laughs> happened. Pres. And we've been doing it for 30 years. Yeah. But not no. anymore. So we'll just have to say. It's not the leaving of Donegan that grieves me. But it's Lonnie when we think of thee. Ah. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> The 
halcyon days of hit after hit come to an end in the late 60s. The 70s see you headlining at the world's top night spots in New York and Las Vegas. But in 1977, you have serious health problems. After three heart attacks, you decide to retire to Lake Tahoe, Nevada. The day before going into hospital for further tests, you have something special to say to Sharon. He took me onto the golf course and he turned around and he said, I'm going to have a test. And then she grew. He said, will I, will I marry him? And he said, where would you like to get married? And I said, the best place for me is my house on my balcony. And that's what we did. And I've never regretted it. Well, in 1978, fully recovered from the operation, you make a record with all the stars you've influenced. Put in on the style. One of the stars on that album you'd signed up years before with your music publishing company. Nights in white satin, oh. never reaching the end. Singer songwriter Justin Hayward. Oh, Justin! Did you know? I know. Hey, that's a marvel. Are you singing it? Now, Justin, Lonnie handled your music publishing for quite a few years, didn't he? He was a lousy publisher. <laughs> great musician. Great musician, lousy publisher. This. But you did lend... When I was 17, you lent me that 12-string guitar. You remember That's the 12-string? Right. Now you want it back. String. I want it back. <laughs> I've saved it for you. And, and I wrote and recorded nights on that. And you were an inspiration to me, like I said. It's an honour to be here. God be bless part you. Of it. Thank you. Thank you, Justin Hayward. Thank you. Well, it's been music all the way tonight, Lonnie, and coming up now, someone determined not to be left out, your seven-year-old son, Peter. Oh! Does your chewing gum leave a flavor <laughs> on the bedpost overnight? Does your mother say don't chew it? Do you swallow it over his spine? Do you catch it on your tonsils? Do you heave it left and right? The chewing gum loses flavor on the bedpost overnight. Oh, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> And, of course, he has uh, followed that up with a personal appearance together with your two other sons and grandchildren. Oh! Hello, baby. Oh. <laughs> that was great, <laughs> Right, all set and lovely. <laughs> and from recent history to the good old days with one last skiffle sound. <laughs> yes, the washboard under the <laughs> nimble thimbles of the same person who backed you on your very first hit with Chris Barber's band almost 40 years ago, Beryl Bryden. <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't have been right without you. <laughs> What's all this? I think that Beryl has a request, right? Well, we're going to try and buttonhole you into doing, with Chris and I, recreating the Rock Island line. Whose guitar is this? Well, we, uh, we believe it's like yours. <laughs> well, it is, yeah. Well, it's got some strings. Nice one, isn't it? What are we going to do here? Rock Island line. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> Oh, ah, just, just, just one on. and a two and a one, two. Oh, well, the rock and line is the money to go. Rock and line is the road to ride. Rock and line is the money to go. And if you want to ride, you can ride like a bunny. Get your ticket at the station on the rock and line. Hey, we see that you hit the street. I'm down the rock and line. Well, the baby's riding the baby's on. 
this is your life. Well, that was the last edition of This Is Your Life in this series. Returning next Wednesday at 7, the game show Cluedo.